scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. Therefore, remember that formerly you, who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised, by those who call themselves a circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, who once were far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing walls of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. Christ's purpose was to create in himself one new human humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which Jesus put to death their hostility. Jesus came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through Christ we both have access to God by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus as a chief cornerstone. In Christ, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple. And in Christ, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. May God bless this reading. So today, you know, we've been talking about the value of. We've heard the value of listening, the value of support, the value of equality. Today, we're talking about the value of liberty and justice for all. Now, I don't know if that's really a pointed discussion that we ought to be having in our day, in our time. The words liberty and justice for all may seem to ring empty for many people in our nation, many brave citizens in our nation. Included in our Pledge of Allegiance, it is, this phrase is supposed to represent the idea that each citizen, each person is equal under the law. Now, it represents the concept that every person is free not to be deprived of life, of liberty, of property, without due process of law. That's now, right. You, did, you didn't know you were going to get, that's because that's in our Bill of Rights, you didn't know you were going to get a history lesson today. Oh, right now. <laughs> but history is important. That's right. It's important. However, if we are going to continue the banner of the land of the free, there must continue to be some change in the home of the brave, amen? That's right, amen. yes. There must be change because the brave we speak of are being denied liberty and equality and protection under the law. And the laws that are on the books right now are trying to be changed back to a former time. No, 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 no. no. <sighs> All that work. But under God's law, we heard in the scripture, we are one. Yes. Yes. That's Woo! right. Yes. We are one. Yes. Yes. Jesus' prayer. Amen. Under God's law. Mm -hmm. Make us one. one. Christ Jesus. So, this week I've been wondering about truth telling. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I, I wonder when did truth telling become optional in our culture? Well, <laughs> I must have missed the memo. Okay. Right? I missed it. I, I've been operating under the assumption of you know what that means. <laughs> no, okay. Under the old rules, where we, where, we, where we live with integrity, and we teach our children to be honest. 
Yeah. Now we see these images of people looking directly in the camera. Yep. <laughs> And lying about all sorts of things. That's right. I thought, is this the new normal? No, better not be. I hope not. I pray not. But we cannot let it be the new normal. It's up to us. This. Now, this is not moral fuzziness on my part or even political partisanship. You know, I, get, I hear the comments about political messages. This is not a political message. I single nobody out. But I ask us all, how do we restore the value of honesty? and liberty and justice to our lives once again. Yeah. How do we reclaim the truth as our standard for our public discourse and for our personal behavior? How? Do you have the answer? Well, our text for today reminds us to remember our past, where we were before we knew the love of God. Remember that past, where people excluded us. And we know, most people in this room know what it feels like to be excluded from, yes. from something. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And some of you know more than others <laughs> what it means. That's right. But so we are called to remember when we didn't have a relationship with God, but then to just hold it for a minute, but then to move forward as people with hope and the peace of God. Not to stay stuck there, but to move forward with God's peace. Yes. And with God's hope. Because Christ is liberty. Amen. And Christ, in, and living in that liberty brings justice, right? To remember, but not to stay there. Because Jesus and our relationship with God is our peace. I have said over and over lately, God, bring me your peace. Help me find your peace. Because I know that finding the peace of God will help me continue. Yeah. Yes. Because if I'm all over the place and I'm operating out of upset oh. and fear, not in God. Woo, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. We have access through Christ. It, our scripture said, all of us. Yes. All of us. All of us have this access to God by the Spirit. Yes. Woo the Spirit of God. Surely the presence of our God is in this place. Yeah. The presence of God is what's going to help us to get through. Someone else can't believe for you. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Someone else cannot believe for you. And I'll tell you, saints, saints they can't take it away from you either. No, they can't. Because you know what I know? Is that nobody else died on the cross for us. Yes. Yeah. Nobody. I had this conversation with my sister a long time ago, and I said, either Marilyn's accepted into our family, because, or I'm not accepted, because Jesus was the one who paid for me, not you. Hey, good point. So, our faith is important. We must pick up our cross and follow. 
pick up our cross. There is liberty in living for Christ, and, and the justice work that we do is how we live that out. It's how we live it out. We are reminded in Christ, it's, the scripture said, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple. Yeah. What does that mean? It means that we need people that are the foundation. We need people that are the walls. We need people that are the windows. <laughs> we need people that are the doors. We need people that are the bathrooms. <laughs> We need people that are willing to join together to build up a holy movement. Yes. Everyone is important. And in Christ we are being built together to become this dwelling place of God. And it's, I'm not talking about the church building. I'm talking about the dwelling places of our lives. Yes, yes. there you go. Christ calls us to build together, to join together, to work together. Listen, not to trample on people with, when they are down. Come on. Not to trample on people when they are different. I went to a training this week, and one of the things that the, one of the trainers said, and this is just so powerful, hold on. Hold on. All right. If you are going to be a bridge, you want to be a bridge builder. Don't get upset when people walk over you. <laughs> Sweet. Well, <laughs> we get our knickers in the wad. <laughs> If you're going to be a bridge builder, don't get upset when people walk on you. Because sometimes they need to cross on over. That's so powerful. See, I believe, I, I believe that our ancestors envisioned a nation wherein liberty and justice would be for all people. Yeah. For some, however, <coughs> liberty has been reduced to a license for self-centeredness and justice has been diminished to mere regulatory or punitive action. I know. Although dictionaries routine define liberty as a state of being, liberty involves so much more, does it not? Yeah. The historical concept of liberty is not that one is free to do as one pleases without accountability for the consequences of one's actions. Rather, our heritage, our liberty means that we are not owned or enslaved by another person's power. Yeah. Don Ortberg said, this is really a good quote, Real freedom is not external freedom from gratifying every appetite. It is the internal freedom not to be enslaved by our appetites. Wow. Wow. So in other words, our individual and corporate freedoms exist within the boundaries of ethical and moral responsibility. True liberty, I believe, true liberty, I said true liberty calls us to express ourselves with civility, and respect the rights of those who think differently than we do. Yeah. Whew. And is that easy, no. saints? No, always. Justice is commonly perceived as the assignment of merit, rewards, or punishment. But the Old Testament, ah, the Old Testament prophet, especially Amos, knew that justice is much more than being affirmed for right behavior or punishment for bad behavior. Amos 5.24, write it down. Amos 5.24 urges us, let justice roll down like a river, he says. Have you ever noticed a river? <clears throat> They're moving. A river cut out the Grand Canyon. Let justice roll down like a river. Powerful. 
justice strives to create opportunities for everybody to succeed economically, vocationally, and socially. And yet, John 8.32 declares, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Right. Therein lies some justice in knowing that truth. Now, we, you and I are blessed to enjoy privileges of freedom. There's some disadvantaged people that we are called to serve, the poor, the widow, the orphans, the sick, the stranger, the hungry, the homeless, those in prison. We're called to serve the immigrants, the different among us. We're called to serve. Even our text today tells us about those who've been excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise. So well, this is not a new problem. It's just that we haven't taken care of it. All right, if you go back in history, uh, history once again, you'll see. Well, you and I are blessed to enjoy the privileges of freedom. We can't afford to take it for granted, saints. We can't afford to take it for granted. No. No. We must be willing to live it, and it means... It's not just giving lip service to it. The tyranny of evil seeks to destroy the very fabric of Christ and the peace of Christ by sowing discord and disillusionment and confusion. Right? Come on! 1 Corinthians 14.33, God is a God of order. So you know what I say? Confusion is not of God. Nope. Confusion is not right. of God. Right. And so, so let us pledge. Let us pledge to God to continue to work for liberty and justice for every person. Let us continue to strive for liberty and justice as a social tenet that affirms the intrinsic human worth and spiritual values that reflect the images of God our Creator and ultimately experience through liberty as we ex exercise our faith in Christ. Yeah. Because it's by exercising that faith that liberty and justice will come. In order to let freedom ring, we must work together, saints. We must work together to let justice grow. The Gentile and the Jew, the gays and the Native Americans, the immigrants and the non-binary people, the Muslims and the Catholics, and all others among us. Yeah. Let freedom ring in our hearts as we go out and we share the peace of Christ, which is, by the way, the answer. It is. The peace of Christ is the answer. That's right. Let freedom ring in you. Ring your Amen. 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 Praise God.